Welcome back to Harbour Unbox for another video. Now this one features many, many benchmark runs, though most of them you won't actually see, but I'll get to what that's all about in a moment. Back in January, I made a series of videos discussing why right now is a bad time to build a gaming PC, and all I really did in that series was deliver bad news. So, sorry about that. More positively though, I have recently been revisiting a few older graphics cards to see how they hold up in today's games, and I found that GPUs such as the GTX 680, R9 280X, and even the GTX 760 still perform very well in the latest games using medium quality type settings at 1080p. The GTX 680 and R9 280X were comparable to the GTX 1050 Ti in terms of performance, but at today's price this can be had for around the price of a GTX 1050 or RX 560. Meanwhile, the GTX 760 costs about as much as a GT 1030, but offers way more performance. Of course, there's always been bargains to be had when shopping for used graphics cards, so none of this is terribly surprising. However, whereas secondhand shopping is usually reserved for bargain hunters, today with the way prices are, many more gamers are considering buying a used graphics card. With so many options available, it's really hard to work out where to even begin. Do you work out which GPU you want, or do you work out what your price range is, but then how do you know how much you should be spending on a particular model. It's all a bit complicated really, so to try and make the process a lot easier, I've spent a huge amount of time working at the average selling price for each model, and then the average performance. To work out the average selling price, I've turned to ebay.com, so all the figures are in US dollars. It really wasn't an option to do this in more currencies if I ever wanted to see my kids again. Still, for the most part, this information should translate quite well into other markets. Of course, pricing is just part of the puzzle, and it was the quicker and easier part of this puzzle to work out. Far more time consuming and difficult was benchmarking all 44 graphics cards in three different games. By providing all of this data though, it means that you guys can quickly and easily work out how each of these graphics cards compares in real world games, which I feel is significantly more useful than a quick and easy to run synthetic benchmark. So for this, I really wanted to test games that are fairly neutral, and by that I mean don't favour one particular brand of GPUs. Therefore, I looked back at one of our recent 35 game benchmark comparisons, which featured a GTX 1060 and an RX 580 along with the GTX 1070 and Vega 56, and I chose the games where these graphics cards delivered similar performance to one another. This led me to choose Battlefield 1, F1 2017, and Rise of the Tomb Raider, all of which were tested using the DirectX 11 API with the medium quality set settings at 1080p. Frame rates for all the graphics cards were higher in Battlefield 1 and F1 2017, while they were about 35% lower in Rise of the Tomb Raider, so this caused some issues for the lower end models, but I still feel like this is a good example of what you can expect to find from modern games using mild quality settings. Before we get to the frames for second results though, let's talk about the average selling price of each model. Okay, so what you're looking at here is the average sale price for the GeForce graphics cards so far during the March period, and I've included all the GeForce 500, 600, 700, and 900 series GPUs. There are 20 different models here, so a wide and varying range of options, and please note pricing has been rounded to the nearest $5. For a bit of context on just how bad graphics card prices have gotten, as if you needed it, here is the average selling price information for the September 2017 period. As you can see, graphics cards such as the GTX 970 have increased by almost 70%. Of course, it's the newer, more capable models that have suffered the highest price inflation, but even so, we're seeing about a 15% increase for the older mid-range models as well, and pricing had already started to increase by September. Moving over to the Radeon GPUs, we have 24 models, but please note I haven't included factory overclocked options like the 7970GHz edition or the 7950 Boost. Those versions have just been included with the standard models. Again, here's a look back at pricing in September of 2017. As you can see, AMD graphics cards have increased in demand significantly, with most having increased by 60% or more in price over the past six months. It's shocking to see the ultra entry level models, such as the R7 360, increasing by almost 90% in value. That's pretty insane, really, but even with all this pricing information sorted out, you might now have a good idea of what each of these models is roughly worth but you probably still have little idea about which one you should actually buy. 
So then let's talk performance. Here's how the GeForce GPUs stack up when benchmarked in three modern games using medium quality settings at 1080p. Also, please note I've included the GT 1030, GTX 1050, and GTX 1060 6GB. So you can see how the older secondhand graphics cards stack up to these modern entry level and mid range offerings. As you can see, the GTX 980 is comparable to the GTX 1060 6GB. The GTX 960 and 760 are comparable to the GTX 1050, while the GTX 650 Ti is comparable to the GT 1030. For those wondering, I am using the 384 CUDA core version of the GTX 560 Ti, and for whatever reason, it just stinks. It's way worse than the GTX 570, and I have tried two different models, and I got the same results, so yeah, it's just hasn't held up well over time. So I'd scrub the base model GTX 560 Ti and 560 off your list. Most of these graphics cards though did provide playable performance, though be aware models with less than 2GB of VRAM can and will deliver mixed results in modern titles. Here's a quick look at the price versus performance for the GeForce GPUs. I won't focus on this graph for too long as I do have a proper cost per frame analysis coming up in a moment. At a glance though, the GTX 670 and 760 look very good. Moving on to the Radeon GPUs, we see fairly respectable performance across the board with the exception of the Radeon HD 7770 and 7790. The R7 360 was also a bit of a battler and the R7 260X will struggle in some titles, requiring lower quality settings and perhaps even a lower resolution. Here we can see that the RX 580 sits between the R9 390X and R9 Nano, while the RX 560 is comparable to the HD 7870 and R9 270X. Then the RX 550 can be found sitting between the HD 7790 and R7 360. Then finally, before moving on, here is a quick look at the price versus performance. The R9 290 looks good along with the 285 and HD 7970. Okay, so here is the cost per frame analysis for the GeForce GPUs. And as you can see, the GTX 570 offers the most bang for your buck at the current prices. The GTX 670, 760 and 660 Ti also offer exceptional value. For me, a standout here though was the GTX 770 as it was very capable in all of the games tested, but it also comes in at a cost of just $1.53 per frame. As expected, the AMD cards are a little more pricey in today's market and getting anything good for less than $1.50 per frame isn't really possible. Realistically, for a good gaming card, you'll be paying over $1.80 per frame for anything from AMD. Still, when compared to buying new, these older graphics cards, such as the 290X and 290, for example, are much better value. Okay, so throughout this video, I've had a really, really tough time showing you all the data for all 44 GPUs on a single screen at once. Uh, it's not really possible without scrolling, which gets even more confusing. So here are all the graphics cards that can be regularly had for a cost of less than $2.50 per frame based on our testing. This leaves us with 33 GPUs, but we can scrub off an additional three as the 7770, 7790 and 650 Ti are all too slow to be useful in my opinion. Okay, so this then is what we've been working towards, a list of the best bang for your buck AMD and NVIDIA graphics cards available on the secondhand market. Again, the GTX 570 and 670 are standouts here, and while the R7 260X looks decent, it's actually very slow. Most of the GPUs in this list though are quite capable, but what if you want something that maintained over 60 FPS in our three game average? Well, here you go. These are the best value performance graphics cards capable of delivering respectable performance in all the latest titles at 1080p. The GTX 770 stands out as the best value choice, while the GTX 680 offers a decent bang for your buck as well. The GTX 780 does surprisingly well also. The R9 285 looks to be a great choice from AMD, but be aware these results are somewhat skewed by availability. For example, in the last six months, there have been just 24 R9 285 graphics cards sold at auction, while in the same period, 600 GTX 770 cards were sold. Over 200 GTX 680 and 200 HD 7970 models were also sold, so realistically, you have a much better chance of getting a 7970 at a reasonable price. Compared to the 7970 though, the R9 280X actually appears to be better value, and with over 400 of them selling in the last six months, you have an even better chance of getting your hands on one of those. 
The GTX 780 Ti looks to be a good option as well. I feel like driver support has improved for the Kepler architecture uh, in recent time but I could be wrong about that. I haven't really looked into it properly. Either way, it did very well in the three games selected for this test, and as such, it came in at a cost of just $1.99 per frame, which isn't that bad, really. That said, though, with just 150 of them sold in the last six months, getting one might be a little more difficult. It might cost $240 US on average, but the GTX 970 should be a pretty easy graphics card to get your hands on, as almost 2,000 of them have sold at auction in the last six months. As one of Nvidia's best-selling GPUs of all time, it's really not that surprising to find so many of them for sale on the second-hand market. It's well worth noting though that in terms of value, the GTX 1050 is very similar to the GTX 970 and 980. Both of the 900 series GPUs are of course quite a good bit faster, so they will enable higher quality visuals. For those of you wondering, here's a quick look at the average auction price in March for each model. As you can see, the cheapest options include the GTX 770 and GTX 680, while the R9 285, R9 280X and 7970 were much more expensive, coming in at around the same price as a GTX 1050. That said though, the GTX 1050 technically shouldn't be included here as it fell short of the 60 FPS minimum with an average 1% low result of 54 frames per second. Here we see that the GTX 770 and 680 offer considerably better performance as does the 7970, 280X and 285. So there you have it, a full breakdown of the used graphics card market. It should be noted that this guide is accurate based on auction prices in March of 2018, or at least the auctions we've seen so far. And as always, pricing will likely change over the coming weeks and months. Whether that is for better or for worse is yet to be seen, but for those of you buying right now, this video should give you a very good idea of what you should be looking out for. For those of you in different regions with a different pricing structure, the benchmark results included in this video will still prove invaluable for working out which graphics cards are worth investing in and how much you should spend. As I found in my recent GTX 680 and R9 280X revisit videos, you will really need to do better than the average selling price to really justify buying a used graphics card. For example, at the average selling price, the GTX 980 is just 20% cheaper in terms of cost per frame than a brand new GTX 1060. And while that means you stand to save about $70 US, that's really not enough to justify the gamble with older used hardware. Of course, you can get lucky. The cheapest GTX 980 sold at auction this month went for just $225, and that's a massive saving from the $360 you can expect to pay for a GTX 1060, an almost 40% discount in fact. Personally, I always shoot for at least a 40% saving on secondhand hardware when compared to a brand new equivalent. Secondhand shopping for a Radeon graphics card does look to be a bit less cost effective. The R9 390X, for example, is just 16% cheaper than the RX 580 when comparing the cost per frame. So although the 390X is on average $100 cheaper, ideally it really needs to be $200 cheaper to make sense in my opinion. At $270, that would give you an almost 40% saving over buying a new graphics card. Given the auction prices that I've seen though over the last few months, getting one for that price really won't be easy. I only found a single example of a working card that went for as low as $270. Most cheap models have gone for a little over $300, which admittedly is still quite good. Overall though, the star of this roundup was the GTX 770, along with the recently revisited GTX 680. The GTX 780 also put in a surprisingly good showing, so that's an option worth considering as well. Based purely on the average auction sale prices, there really isn't much to see from AMD. It seems their cards are just too good at mining, but with the cryptocurrency industry seemingly falling apart at the moment, the future could be bright once again for gamers. Fingers crossed anyway. And that's where I'm going to end this video. I really hope you found it useful. I poured a huge amount of time and effort into this one. So if you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button for us, subscribe for more content. And if you appreciate the testing we do here at Harbour Unbox, then consider supporting us on Patreon. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.